this can is very tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. And then I'm gonna pull the, the can forward as soon as I feel like the oil just wants to splat out. Okay. And then we got also got the other side as well to do. That's gonna be the same boat. Lefty Lucy, right? Yeah, that feels, ooh, look, I was holding the exhaust. I didn't realize it. If I, my mind wasn't there and I was holding, you can see how cold it is. Even the exhaust now is not that hot anymore. But this is enough warmth to loosen our cold oil that's in there. It's held by spring. So here we go. I'm gonna try to capture ever all the components out, but keeping only, I, what I really want is just the spring. Okay, we also gotta take the other side off too, keep in mind. It's gonna, oh, that's what I was afraid I was gonna do. Oh man, look how dark that is. Oh no, no, it's bearing, uh, it's bearing, <laughs> it's bearing our, uh, that's okay, we'll fish it out later, how about that? Okay, look at this guy, maybe I can hold on to this guy, we just, actually we don't need our cap anymore, right? The only thing we need from that cap is a magnet. Ugh. There you go, I got him, got him with two fingers. Alright, if you have a flat pan it might be easier, but yeah, he's coming. All right, there we go. I wish there was a little net here you could just hang on to it or have it like hang on, you know? But anyway, I got him. I'm gonna pull him out. Oh yeah, look at that. You, see, uh, you guys can't see it, can you? That's how dark it is. Everything in there is just dark. Man, that, get, that went into a honey glaze too. Look at that, you can see the tip of my finger. Oh man, it always feels good doing this to your scooter. Giving it what it needs. See how that, look at that. That is just dark, nasty stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna take a shop rag here. Disposable. Hop them over real quick. Maybe I can push them out like this. Okay, right? I don't wanna go over my exhaust. Okay, so, oh, look at that. <laughs> you see that? This was clean. Look how much scrap that magnet caught. Look at that. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if a bird feather and everything. This thing was clean, clean. And you guys know me, I'm a pretty clean freak. I can't believe it actually has that in my engine. Hair. Oh, God. That is nasty. Can you imagine if this was in your engine? You wouldn't put it in your engine. You would have buried it. That is... Golly, that's... That's the breaking period for you. And I had control too, so I knew exactly what oil I put in there. I put that, that Bell Ray oil and everything. It was clean when I put it. But I guess with the open... Um, you know, we were trying to tune everything everything open so now it's going to be much more cleaner after this so let me see if i can actually push this bucket all the way to the other side and maybe even knock that guy out of the water let's see here before it actually look at that i'm on the borderline here before it actually decides to spill over okay let me go let's go over there and break the other one see how close i am here to the edge of the bucket here one more slight push and it's gonna fall over it's just nasty. All right, so let's go ahead and change the other one. And the same 17 millimeter socket. This also has a, a washer that we put in as well. If we need to, we'll put a new washer. Yeah, it gives us enough room here. You can see there, it'll probably fall flat in there. Yeah, I need to get the magnet back out of the Prima cap. That's all we need. We don't need the Prima cap anymore, but you can still wash it. I guess when we pour our oil into like a disposable container here, we'll be able to get to that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, unbolt this guy here. And I don't realize that the Prima Magna bolt, that third bolt, is actually for this guy's side right here. A lot of people actually don't change their oil opening this side. 
believe it or not, they just thought it was just right below that uh, drain bolt. I didn't realize that either until after a while. I'm like, wait a minute, there's another third bolt for the Prima. Where is it for? And that's why I discovered this is another side where you want to open it up and actually empty out your uh, oil. So Lefty Lucy, I'm going to go clown the clockwise here. Let's see if I can get a little bit more leverage here. That way you guys can see how much nastiness is coming out. All right. This one's really tighter in there. Yeah, it's much more tighter in there. Okay. And use a little bit more body angle. So let me go on, go on this side here. And there we go. Cracked. Okay. Now this is has nothing to do with the washer or anything, but uh, it has a magnet also, but it's attached magnet to the bolt, so we don't have to worry about uh, a separate uh, center magnet. Wow, pretty, it's pretty snugged in there. Again, you don't want to put blue Loctite on this because these things are maintained stuff. Just get a good washer. Here we find. I think we actually drove the washer in there. It's, the washer probably stays flat in there. You can see it. See, look at all that sludge coming out. Yeah. So here it is. Look how dark that is. If it actually captures anything, it would be just that. Look at that. Look at that. We didn't put anything on the tip of this. That's actually from whatever, you know, probably light melted ceramic do. You can hear it pouring. Yeah. Yep, this does. You would never think the oil gets this bad less than 75 miles, maybe, of driven. So that's what they say don't use synthetic on your first oil change because synthetic gets into the crisp and starts making their its fill in. And because you don't want them to fill in, you want it all get all out. So you can use synthetic after the first maybe a couple of oil change, maybe a thousand miles plus. So you'll have probably like what two oil changes before the thousand mile oil change. But yeah, just wipe it clean. You should be okay. I mean, motor oil is good lubricant already and it's good cleaning agent as well. But just wipe it a little bit more for yourself. And the washer is actually still pressed on there. We'll just leave it on there for a while. We'll make sure we'll wipe it though. Now the reason why I'm afraid to shoot vacuum. I can shoot a vacuum. You'll see it more splat. There's another trick to get all the motor oil out. Especially all this gunk. I could probably shoot the vacuum out this way. So let's do that. And we got air gear oil here filling up as well. So he's good to go. Just let that all drizzle out while you're cleaning this. All right, so continue on. Clean this guy. You could take and maybe spray some brake cleaner too if you want, or parts cleaner. This one, golly, needs to be rinsed out and everything. Look at all that scraps of hair and everything. That's just ridiculous. If if you showed me this and you said that was in my engine, I wouldn't even believe you unless I took it out right now, seen for myself. That is just wow. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take this and give it a good brake cleaner or parts cleaner here before we put it, assemble it back in. Unbelievable. Amount of garbage there we go Whew. nice and cold be careful with these little fins there if you're gonna reuse it clean it thoroughly but don't don't change the shape of it uh, you know gapping it with, with any kind of sh sharp dagger or anything you want it to be able to protect you, all the like all particles like that again. 
So take it, just give it a good See, that's what it should look like. Nice and silvery. Oh, and a little papon water. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Part cleaner will dry out. Keep it from corroding. Oh, yeah. Let me get this all in there. Feel my hand a little bit burning now. Yep, just good old brake cleaner or whatever you have, parts cleaner. Same thing, brake parts cleaner. See, it's gonna dry it out. Take it, give it a good turn. Yeah, I'll also clean. Okay, get the other rest of the parts and clean up as well. I guess we could take out the bolts and everything here. And just give it a good spray. That way for sure we know it's clean. Uh, Go and get that sprayed out. Then we'll get a clean shot rag to put them all in and get ready for a bolt on. We still have to get that Prima and the magnet out of our uh, thing when we actually dispose of our castle. Again, filter looking pretty much more nicer now. If they're really bad, you can just throw it away. They're not that expensive to change them. They're like a couple of bucks. Uh, if anything, you know what I mean? A couple of dollars. Probably worth taking them out. I mean, the spray alone is going to cost you a little bit more than actually. So, let's give it a good spray, get them all in there. Ugh. Brake cleaner. Keep them nice and ready to go for your bolt. There we go. Get a clean shot rack. I think there's one more bolt that we need to get. And that's actually our fill in bolt for the transmission. Okay, so that's ready to go. It's all clean now. Okay, we'll put them in a nice shop rag transfer them over so this is good we'll close the cap on this guy <laughs> you can blow out some more and then just should get these guys here in the clean towel that way throw this away all right Go ahead and bring this over. And another trick to show you to be able to get uh, all your transmission flew out is take a shop back here I was mentioning. And I guess you're gonna be using just the air pressure out. So what you wanna do is you wanna connect it to making sure, sure the air actually siphons out. So let's see which direction that air will be flowing. Okay, this is something and this is blowing out. So you wanna connect the hose to the one that's blowing out. So we'll do that. And you're gonna need a funnel for this one. You're gonna need a small funnel, preferably one of these ones. That way you can actually force the air, because if you don't have an air compressor, this will probably be their best bet here to get every uh, bit of the transmission gear oil as well as motor oil out. And you're gonna need that tall bottle. So like this one, because it will splat. And you don't want to get it splat all over you, right? So you definitely want to get that in there, sorry. My magnet here is strong enough, but I guess by me keep on flexing everywhere in every direction. Uh, so what you're gonna see is you can see how here this is compressed already in there by the bottle. What I'm gonna do is take this right here. I think I could probably pull it off. No, it doesn't go all the way in, which is fine. You remember last time this hard thing cracked on us. Harbor Freight actually has one where it's more flexible than this one. This one just came from the auto parts store. So what I'm gonna do is Put this suction here, create a little bit more closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and force the air. And you can see a little bit more, so you can get a good eyes view. I'm gonna do it and then hopefully won't block the camera angle. I'm gonna shoot force air in here and you can see a little bit more gear oil coming out of the bottle. Get that resolution in there. So here we go, I'm turning it on. <laughs> more but still a little bit it 
again, you're forcing air down that wind uh, where you're filling in and forcing more, you know, of the uh, transmission oil. You can do the same thing with this one here too. Now again, this one, be careful. You're gonna need one of those tall oil catch can like this one right here because you're gonna need to tilt it. Now we're gonna bring it all the way to the other side because that thing was kind of splat. So we're gonna force it to come down. So we're gonna do the same thing here. And you're gonna see a little splat on the other side because that's where it's coming from. In fact, I'll, I'll position the camera where you can see the splat coming from the other side while I force down on this one. You can even force it from here actually. And we actually just might do that. So you can see a splat on both sides. It's gonna come well. The thing is I'm afraid to do it this way because I want it to be able to capture the splat. So I'm gonna tilt this like right there because I don't want the splat to, just the splat, you know? <laughs> okay, so here we go. Just tilt an angle there. Careful, it's gonna get really messy. And I'm gonna shoot force air from this side here. further and shoot it from the very top so you're gonna see it's flat coming from both sides but before I do that I want to probably close this side right here up because this one's gonna be a straight shot outward and we don't want oil to, to burst out so let me go and just give them a few threads to lock them in so what I did was oh yeah you guys got the splat effect look Black came out a little bit here. So what I did was I bolted him, bolted him on just a few threads just to keep him from popping out because I don't want the splat to come horizontally attacking. So we're gonna bring this guy around, bring our shop back, that rolled around here. Okay, this is all that little spatical that probably came out, you probably saw. Now we can get some more out. And how we get that out is, we can open this wind the filler area. All right, there we go. Our oil is nice and dry. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just lay this somewhere here. Lay on cardboard, we're all messing with cardboard anyway. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna shoot the cold air right there through it. Turn it on. that little drip that's coming from the oil being built up so we'll just leave it that one alone now we are done blowing the last bit of oil out of our reserve our crankcase and before we tap it in let's go and look at that allen bolt setup that we we're planning to do so there it goes this is the one that we're trying to replace just let the oil kind of do its job here let it drain I'll go and reopen that other side just in case more decides to come out and play. Let's go. See here. Give them enough to come out, but not enough to. There you go. See. Still wanted to come out. So let it come out. Clean this guy up some more. Put him here. Put the rest of the bolts will. Get a good wash on them soon. Look at that. Take them all. <laughs> That's a splat I was afraid of. Imagine if you had a lower can, that thing would go everywhere. All right. Or if you had two hands, you can lift it up a little bit, go higher up. 
before you actually force some cold air in there. Okay, let's go and see if this M10 thread size will actually f replace these guys here. Be so much cooler. So let's check it out. I'm gonna go get the socket to drive this. Seems like a really big Allen socket. I'm not even sure we have it. But let's look at our our new driven socket case here and see if we do have it. I put my thing here so it doesn't scrap up when I'm moving things around. I don't want the, the anchor to get scrapped up, so I do it this way. The cables are like braided or something. Unfortunately, these these uh, little uh, magnet attachment only downside of them they actually don't read data they only charge and they do a pretty decent charge they're not like really charge you any more better than the um the regular solid cable so i could see that's the only downside i could see well we have probably a bit of sizes we'll figure out which one this looked like it and it is so this size is nico number eight so we use number five on the brakes now it's number eight so we need it all right, first of all, we need to remove this guy out. I believe he was a size 12 or maybe even bigger. Who knows? So let's go ahead and pull one out first to see if one will fit. I think this will give us enough thread size also. If we do a little side comparison of the bolt, actually it might be way more than we really need. Let's see here, look. Do you see? It might not work because they'll hit the disc brake right away. You can tell right there. That's where the disc brakes are. And so these cannot go any higher so we'll have to look for something smaller smaller maybe unfortunately we might not have anything smaller or unless it's the m8 then we got a little bit more size selection you can see here there's nothing really smaller so before we even break it let's see if we have it because we already had blue loctite and everything nicely let's see if the gosh i can't remember it but let me look at this one i think i might have some from the previous one. Got to have to take this one out. Kind of get an idea how big these bolts were. I believe they were M8 bolts, though. I mean M10 bolts. They would have to be like, like this size right here. And then you can see here. These we do have a very selection of M8 bolts, but M8 bolt size are not the same as M10. So much bigger difference. So I believe the Bonjo bolts are pretty much their M10 thread size. They're really big. Um, or M8, let's find out. Now, if we did, it would probably be in a silver color, unfortunately. So let's see. See, these are still getting a little bit smaller. I think they might be too small. Let's find one even smaller. I think we do have some snub ones. There we go. These ones might be too small. I mean, we want thread, but we don't want it to be to the point where we have nothing. So let's see how these measure up. And if they don't fit, then oh well, these bolts would just do just fine. So we tried. Let's see, okay, here we go. I'm going to line them up. Actually, they would work. Look at that. It's just barely enough. Now we can put a washer as well, so that washer will bring it in a little bit more like this. So it's like barely holding on. So unfortunately they don't have, a, well, actually, let's see. A washer will dip into it a little bit more anyway, so a washer might work. But let's find out they are the thread size though. Instead of opening this up and finding out it isn't, let's try looking the back side of it. And let's compare. We can go by what we see here. And, know the truth look at that thread size there and look at this one i'm thinking it's a possibility there is an m8 but how do i know for certain though i could take my caliper and measure it wouldn't that be a brilliant idea okay let's take our caliper and measure it see what that thread size it really is caliper will probably fit in there i wish i didn't bolt it in yet and then realize it might not be so, uh, uh, I brought my caliper inside, so let me go grab my caliper real quick. We'll continue on from this one. So let me go get my caliper and we can take a measurement of this. No 
biggie. I thought I had my caliper out here, really. I guess not. Okay. So let me go ahead and get the caliper ready. Take a measurement of that. That one bolt there. Be right back. Okay, got my caliper here. Let's go and try this guy out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set it to millimeters. There and take a measurement of him. There we go. Yeah, actually, is it a mate? Right off the bat, this will work. 757. The caliper is not always accurate, especially when you have dips, uh, dips inside the threads and stuff. So it might be in the lower end thread. So if that's the case. Then it actually would be this guy's size. See, 784. Same thing when it actually goes in a thread like this, dips in more, only 707. So, yeah, cool. So, we got those guys here. So, I guess, unfortunately, we don't have. I mean, we could take uh, their, one of their M8s and cut it. You know, I just don't have a cutter tool, unfortunately, right now. So, we'll just stick with silver. Silver is better than the ugly grime, lime green one, right? So, let's go and get that guy bolted out. And he's probably going to take a different socket than the one that we anticipated was number eight, Allen. So let's find out if this number eight Allen still works with him. And no, he doesn't, way too big. So more than likely he might be at H7. Nope, that's way too big also. Let's find out which one he is. Uh, he might be at H6. Yep, H6. He's on the top, smaller level now. So let's go and bring that guy out. And let's go ahead and prepare a uh, red lock tight. And we're gonna need some washers too, but I believe that one we should drive it with some washers because we don't want this. I mean, this has a, a little bit of diameter, but it's not a lot. So let's find actually a good washer that'll cover because it looks like it has a lot of space it can cover still. So let's find out a good lock washer. I mean, not a lock washer, but a, we can lock wash it. But I think more just like a washer that will fit just right. Look at our washer assembly here. Let's go and find out which one. These are pretty big, but you don't want to be too big. You know what I mean? It's not it's way too big. You don't want to strip. These might be too small. And in fact, these are lock washers here, but they put a lot more thickness into them. I mean, lock washers, I mean, maybe lock washers would be better, right? These ones look like they'll fit. They'll dig in too also, help uh, prevent it from vibrating off, especially brakes, right? So let's try with the lock washer and see if we can actually put blue Loctite on it. So we'll need another one of these. And we'll go ahead and grab another one of these guys uh, out of the bag here. The little mini me. Uh, this one's a little bit longer, but again, we can't do much longer, maybe. Yeah, see, these guys will probably hit the disc brakes. So the only one we could probably get away with is the little, the little snubby ones here. But let's see. So if I put these guys here, right, even with the washer, I'm taking a chance right there. I mean, it might skip the, the disc brake. So let's not. So let's go ahead, go ahead and stick to our smaller ones here. These ones are M8 by 12, and these ones were M8 by 20. So that slight, you know, six millimeter of length there, it's not gonna help us any. So let's go ahead and get these guys, get ready to take them off. We can do this right now while we're waiting for every bit of drop of our oil to exchange, then we can go back to it. Okay, we're gonna just gonna put them with lock washers like these. I don't know why I got more than one. I thought the other one didn't have it yet. Put our never ending blue Loctite as a backup. Get two of these guys out, ready to go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get that guy screwed out. I think it's an M12, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, so more than likely, it might be a 916. So let me go ahead and... 
Oh wait, that wasn't even M12. That was a, actually a 10 millimeter. So this is an M12 right here. Yeah, it's just a M12 right here. So we can drive it out with an M12. Scared me there. So we'll drive it out with M12 and then we'll put an Allen six on there. So Allen's almost like half the number of our uh, matrix, our hex. All right, let's go and drive these guys out. Lefty Lucy. Oh boy. I'm going to try to get the towel over here. I don't want to put any pressure on my uh, exhaust here. Okay, Lefty Lucy, right? So we're going to turn it downward. Not neutral. Oh, there we go. Get that towel out of the way now, it's fine. Might need it again, but oh, sorry, you guys can't see it. Taking the first bolt out first. We're gonna try them out first. So, all right, might be a good idea to put extension. See if I can get extension, so. Don't put too much damage on my exhaust. Hmm. Can't find my extension when I need it. All right, let me go and get this cloth. Lift up the exhaust a little bit. This is very short thread. Should be coming off now. I have to lift up my brake. There we go. We had some blue Loctite in earlier, but it wasn't enough, so this is good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that guy on here with some blue Loctite. So it's nice and silver, you know, it matches a little bit of the brake. I mean, I'd rather match the, um, the metal one, but hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take what I can. Uh, it's unfortunate that we can't, we didn't have any of these size ones. I mean, these are MA, we could cut them, and they would work, but we need to get a grinder and everything like that, so. We'll settle, we'll settle. The silver one somewhat matches a little bit of this anyway. All right, so here we go. Get some never ending blue Loctite on this guy. And we'll be on our merry way. We'll do one at a time. The other one's to hold the other one. Yeah, if you don't put enough blue Loctite, sometime it might defeat the purpose. You just kind of like shading it in, not really building that cement punk. So you, you don't want a lot either. That just goes everywhere, especially near the brakes. You don't want it to fall anywhere. So I, it's got a fair good amount there, you can see. The other side has nothing, but that's fine. Because when shit goes, it's going to twirl it all in anyway. You put too much and it drips all out. Okay, so here we go. The thread's on the other side. I'm feeling it. It's turning in smoothly. Nice. And then the lock washer will keep it from vibrating easily out. What well, does, it kind of puts a pressure of like, you know, when things are pressured out like this, it can't spin freely because it's pressured. Okay, so now we can, what am I doing? I'm taking my socket here and driving in. We need that other socket right here, this guy right here. This is the only one to drive it in now. We're gonna need the number eight. So it's gonna be righty tidy now. There we go. And using the number, oh, so sorry, number six. Got confused where number eight was the earlier one that we tried to, thought we could fit it in. Okay, so the thread is going good. So this is definitely a, a number eight socket. Gonna lift up the exhaust a little bit, put a towel over the ratchet. Wait, am I tightening it or loosening it here? There we go, just tightening it. There we go, beautiful. And let's see if there's enough thread going out because we definitely want enough thread to go out. This barely clears this little bar right here too, so it's perfect. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And let's go and see how much it flushed out on the other end. 
before we say yay or nay. Oh, look at that. Nice. It actually protrude out. So I could feel it right there, see? That's just perfect flush, really. Nice. So the other side's gonna get the same treatment. So let's go and take that guy out. Get ready. Ready to work with this guy now. There we go. Get him out. Sorry, I'm gonna block your view a little bit here. Try to get my socket in there first. Hmm. Mm, craftsman. Craftsman made in the USA. Wish his Sears were still around, huh? Then he can warranty it. This one looked like it's hard to get into a slot anymore. See, I'm trying to put it in. Oh, no, it goes in because it's on camera. <laughs> it always does it in what you tell it to when it's on camera. All right, so there we go. Yep. <sighs> Beautiful. I love that Allen look. I just really do. Look how... Uh, compare it see there's no comparison it just looks so much more like hd versus you know retro standard let's say <laughs> this is like hd now you get into the other one then you you know you get into the i don't know bolt on usa one that one now that's like uh 4k so oh i'm talking about this one right here that's when we get into 4k right there <laughs> But, man, I'm not going to spend that much money on some bolts unless I really need a certain particular application to work. So we're going to go ahead and get this all squared away. All right. Hey, at least good to know that, you know, our blood, our engine blood line, I guess you could call it, it's thoroughly going to be clean. So there it goes. This was the, this was the original. And this is what we're going to put in replacement. So with the washer and everything, it just shy from a little bit, but it's actually perfect because we saw it flush too. Now, unfortunately, we can't see this one flush, but I don't think the bar is going to change its diameter from here to there. So you can see here, some of the thread is protruding out the first one. And the second one, we might be able to see it. Well, maybe we can go from top. And I'll, I'll try to get when I get it bolted on there, I'll show you. Okay, so in the meantime... Let's go ahead and focus on that. Put some enough blue Loctite. Again, I just wish they put in a blue tube, you know? It's great and all, they want to keep the tube consistent, but if they're going to change the leathering, why not just change the tube color also? It just makes no sense. It feels like it's, I know it came out earlier, so there's no reason, but it feels like there's air pressure or something stopping it. It's weird. I know, I feel like I'm painting. It shouldn't be this long to put blue lock tight on the bolt, really. But I'm afraid if I squeeze any more, it might come out too much. All right, so that's fair enough. You can see here. Pretty fair. It's going to go in. What it does is just harden and cements it. And then we got our washers, too. I mean, a lock washer here. That will prevent the vibration from just uh, pulling out prematurely without a tool. Naturally, let's say. All right, so I'm going to twist it by hand. As much as I can. That rhymes. It's like you're happy when things are going smoothly. And then when they're not, man, all hell breaks loose. You just want to swear at everything. <laughs> there you go. Uh, dang, this thing is tight. So what I'm going to do is probably have to lift the brake lever or something like that. Let's try to have to wiggle it. Give it a little bit more speed slack or something. Because uh, I cannot twist this by hand for the life of me. So it might be cross thread too, so I gotta be really careful. It always comes down to the last thread. Okay, so righty tighty. Oh, it's not righty tight. Come on. Okay, so let me see if I'm gonna play around the. There we go. Now it's going smoothly. Now I can twist it by hand, clockwise. And then I have to go back with the ratchet again. Is it? Hopefully I don't strip my thread. Yeah. There it goes, tighten. Yeah, you definitely don't want to strip that. That's the only thing holding your brake assembly. So you're, if this thing's broken, you're gonna need to probably a new swing arm. I mean, there's ways to fix a thread. You can probably like, you know, put some, I don't know, copper wire or something, have it crushed when you drive the thread in, but this is more work than you really want, right? But anyway, it's not. So let me go on top here and show you. 
if it actually coming out the thread or not. So we see already the first thread barely. You can probably tell a little bit, but not much. This is the first one here that came out. We did it good right there. Sorry. Where is it? Oh, right there. Yeah, I can feel it. So I know that's the thread bump right there, that silver one. And then the next one here, kind of hard to tell. Try some, get some more natural light, supposedly. All right, so you can see it, I guess, that way. All right, so I'm turning. Alan's got some muscle to it. All right, that's good enough. All right, so let me see if I can feel it for you. Take my hand in there. Can't even feel it, so we'll just have to go by ear. But it's driven down there flat as can. So the only idea was because we wanted some Allen bolts, right? So here we go, we got it. All right. Not bad. All right, so the next one is, we're gonna go ahead and, I guess since we're doing all this, we're, in, we're here in the back array, let's go ahead and create that little thing to mount our exhaust a little bit more secure. But before we do that, we normally have to take it off anyway, put our, fan, uh, our shrank cover, so it's much more easier to, let's see, probably gonna go ahead and just leave this guy right now. And, because we're gonna put our fan shroud and everything like this, so we're probably gonna have to take this guy off completely anyway to help us out. Last time we had to take all these little parts out to mount it more securely. So we'll just leave this off. Um, but we will be changing this bolt here when we put it back into some nicer bolts. Look and see how dry my hand is now. That's from the brake cleaner. And we might wanna start maybe filling up the oil again and such and such, or bolt everything down for our engine oil here. We don't wanna keep it open too long. So yes. before we do that, we have to actually tighten all our, our radiator fuse and everything like that too. So got a lot of things to take care of before we really start wrapping things up here. So let me go and put these, I guess, well, there we go. The screen stuff, I wanna get dirty. We were gonna put new washers, so we'll find new washers for these guys before we put these bolts in. These are spares now, I guess as a backup. Not using those guys anymore, or I guess that's back up anyway. We'll put them in there. Okay, let's see here. We got we're good here, we're good here. We can put this guy back in. The sticker fell out of the bag. Maybe we can put it back in the sticker here. That way, we don't have to worry about it. Oops, sorry, vibration not good for a camera, regular camera, a regular phone camera. So I'm gonna put this guy back in the sticker bag. That way we know. It's a M8 by 12. You guys wanna know what your brakes are. M8 by 12 and you can still get a washer in it like you can see there. Come on, stay focused. Ooh. Sorry, still humming and vibrating. I'll show it to you again once it starts. It stop. It's still doing it. Come on. There you go. M8 by 12 and you're probably gonna need maybe for the side of the front brake as well so let's see if the front brake actually doesn't have it you can put it on there now as well right since we already have it out of the bag and we have to get two washers it's gonna take uh, these washers are the 516 fun get two of these guys out let's bring our sock as well I'm sure the brake probably holds differently but if I'm wrong then we didn't bring all this for nothing so let's go check it out. Yep, our brakes are the same. There it is, those bolts there. Let's change those those ugly green bolts out. Right, I brought my blue Loctite here. I brought my bolts here. I brought the screws for both of them here. All I need, number six, and M12 socket. So let's go and take.